birth control actually made me really nauseous mm. and moody and I never really liked the way I felt on it. Is that normal? Why am I like? And then you get your period and it's like, ah, it all makes sense. Don't eat when you're stressed, guys. This is like my pro tip. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dairy, the cheese, everything related. Hello guys, welcome back to another episode and we're in the studio. You guys are like always asking why are you guys in the studio anymore? Well, sometimes we're just lazy, but today I have a really special guest. This is Lulu Ge from Elix Healing. I'm so excited because you guys know one of my favorite topics to talk about is all about hormonal imbalance, PCOS symptoms, PMS symptoms, and how that relates to clear skin. Like why aren't we getting glowy skin mm -hmm. when we should be? and we're using all the right products. Well guys, it's all inside. And what better person to have on the show than Lulu? I'm so excited to be here and chat about our menstrual and hormone health and how that is basically related to every single aspect of our lives from our energy, our glow, our skin, our cravings, everything. Because this topic is so huge and I feel like it's not talked about enough even among like girls, women, like females, moms to daughters, all this stuff. And there's so much growing up that I was like, why didn't I know this growing up? So today we're gonna break down the most common PMS symptoms mm -hmm. like cramping or diarrhea or like acne, breakouts, everything of that sort and peel it back to why that could be happening. What's going on inside and have Lulu explain because I don't know, I don't know what's going on. So we need someone who's educated in the field and has all the knowledge, wealth of knowledge to share back to you guys. So it's gonna be so fun. I'm excited. <laughs> So let's start off with, I guess, our own personal struggles with our period and menstrual cycles. So the community knows, and I think a lot of what we talk about here is acne or breakouts mm -hmm. and inflammation. So for me, it's like that week before my period, I'll get really sluggish, mm -hmm. I'm quite moody, and I break out with cystic acne all along the jawline. And no matter what it is that I do, like if I sleep well, if I try to do all these things, it still comes out mm. and bloating. It was like really bad bloating and it's aching throughout the body. Mm. So to me, that was just like normal. Like mm. this is just my life. And on top of that, it never came. Like it was every three months oh. or every two and a half months, maybe sometimes. Yeah, it was just not regular yeah so then that's kind of been my journey of figuring that out and i think the the older i've gotten the yeah. more in tune i've been mm. with my body it started to regulate a little bit and i think it's really interesting that your brand mantra is tune in harmonize and heal so can you share a little bit more about like how you guys came up with this whole philosophy and tying in, I guess, like TCM and the roots of that. So much of TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, is about tuning in to the signals of our body. And how can we become friends with ourselves, get curious about what these things are telling us about what's going on inside? Because it's only when we understand what's going on inside can we actually take the steps to help heal ourselves and my personal journey was so much like yours mm. you know in my 20s on the weekdays i was uh, working like 60 to 70 hour weeks i was drinking so much caffeine oftentimes working through lunch skipping lunch mm. and i was on birth control actually for almost 16 years mm. kind of put on the pill when i was a teenager to help with my heavy bleeding my cramps and my hormonal acne oh. and it worked for a period of time but then I noticed that birth control actually made me really nauseous mm. and moody and I never really liked the way I felt on it when I went off the pill that's when I discovered post birth control syndrome mm. and my periods came back with a vengeance oh. so my hormonal acne was way worse much heavier bleeding pain and long story short that's what led me back to Chinese herbal medicine and diving into this world of hormone health. I'm like, what do all these things actually yeah. mean? Yeah. So say we're all in the week before our period. Mm -hmm. Do we all get the symptoms for the same reason? Like is bloating for me the same as bloating for you? And are we deficient in the same things that lead to it? Or is it like 
different? The short answer is that it could be different. <laughs> and that's actually why, so for Elix, we created a free online health assessment that anyone can take and it asks you questions like, do you get diarrhea or constipation? Do you have sharp stabbing pain or is it more dull? How much stress is in your life? Because Chinese medicine uses pattern diagnosis. So based on your unique pattern of the different symptoms, it points to a different root cause. Mm. And then depending on the root cause, there's herbs, food, and other things that can help you bring your body back to balance. Okay, so you guys need to do this <laughs> health assessment because it asks you questions that's almost like a self-help book. <laughs> it's like, wait, I haven't been thinking about these things. So I did the assessment and I think my outcome was like qi stagnation. Mm -hmm. So I also know that I have like dampness and mm -hmm. heat. Mm -hmm. So does that relate to a specific set of skin concerns typically? Like, is that why I have acne? A lot of people with hormonal acne will experience damp heat. And you know, when we think about foods that are like damp heat related, it's like a lot of the dairy, the cheese, like heat is like the fried foods, yeah. like French fries. Yeah. And it makes sense in a way. Yeah. And that's when we start to see a lot of the acne around the jawline. Yeah. There are herbs that are really great at helping the body clear that damp heat. Mm -hmm. But then for other people, it could be actually due to other conditions of like blood and chi, and it could be brought on, you know, by more of like that internal stress that's causing deficiency, maybe because they need more rest and they haven't nourished their body. So, you know, for everyone, it's different. Chinese medicine always says like the right treatment for the right person at yeah. the right time. Oh my God, it's like skincare, right? Like like not one size fits all. So we've kind of set the standard for a lot of PMS symptoms. I'm wondering like, is this normal? Mm. And what is normal if it's not? I think periods have been stigmatized for far too long. And all these things like painful periods, clotting, things that shouldn't be normal. It feels embarrassing mm -hmm. to talk about these things. And I think that's why they've been normalized. Mm. Whereas statistics show that up to 90% of women actually experience some type of these premenstrual symptoms. And so I think to start, it's helpful to understand the phases of our menstrual cycle. And this is where Chinese medicine and Western biomedicine actually kind of have a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm if you break it down. So you mentioned, Felicia, like feeling tired and moody in the period leading up to your period. The <laughs> luteal phase? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, the luteal phase. And it's interesting because in the luteal phase, Chinese medicine says that's the time when we really want to start nourishing our qi and our blood. And in Chinese medicine, qi is really our vital life force. It's what helps like blood get pumping, it's what gives us energy, it's what helps everything move within our body. But if we're always go, 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 and we're not giving ourselves proper rest and nourishment, we can become deficient mm -hmm. in qi. And the qi deficiency kind of looks like that feeling of like exhaustion. And that deficiency is actually what could cause like irregular cycles. Mm -hmm. Or it could be our qi gets stuck. There's so much stress and tension in our body with nowhere to go that it causes like intense pain and cramping that could start before our period. Mm. So that luteal phase is actually a really important time to tune in and figure out what is happening in my body right now? Mm -hmm. Am I exhausted? Do I have like bloating and digestive upset? If so, what kind of digestive upset? Is it diarrhea, which could point in Chinese medicine to more dampness or internal cold? Mm -hmm. Or is it, you know, that I just have trouble going to the bathroom and maybe it's been two or three days and yeah. I feel like I should go. No, <laughs> I haven't. So there's the luteal, which is the week before our bleed or our period. So then what are the characteristics of how we typically feel on our period, like that week of? So when we think about our cycles in terms of like yin and yang, um, and the concept of yin and yang is this idea of like dualities. Like there's natural times of the day when everything is free flowing in our bodies that we should have more energy, we should be radiating. First thing in the morning when we wake up, if everything's in balance, then we should have natural energy before we even drink our caffeine. Interesting. <laughs> but then 
And if we are like pushing ourselves too hard or if we're deficient in certain things, then maybe we wake up every morning and we're exhausted when we should have energy. Yeah. But then when the sun goes down, it's like that yin time of day. Mm -hmm. And that's the time when we might feel a little bit more tired, a little bit slower, ready to have dinner and rest and call it a day. And that's natural, right? And so the concept of yin and yang in our day also applies to our menstrual cycle. Mm. So as we're going from the luteal phase into our period, that's actually when we are the most yin. So it's almost like think of it as like we're going from like daytime, which is ovulation, into the evening or the yin time of our cycle. And that might be when we don't feel as social as we normally are. Yes. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we're I'm like <laughs> hermit crab. Yeah, because our body is just craving some additional rest. Mm. And maybe we're extra sensitive. Maybe because we're go, go, go the whole entire month that during our period, we're like, no more. Like, that's the last straw. I'm not going to like sweep that comment from my yeah. coworker under the rug yeah. anymore. I'm sick of dealing yes, with it. <laughs> You might think of it as moody or it could be sensitive, but Chinese medicine says that's actually when our body is most wise and intuitive. You know, we're no longer gonna sweep things under the rug. It's a time to reflect and see what are areas of our life that are really, you know, either helping or hurting us mm -hmm. and what sh can we do about it? And so if we actually allow ourselves to feel the full power of that yin phase. We can, you know, do things like journal and reflect and rest and read and that could be a beautiful time of like recharging yeah so then immediately after our bleed after our period as we're kind of going into the follicular phase and ovulation that's when we can prepare ourselves okay now we've tuned in we've relaxed we've journaled we have all these new insights about ourselves so going into ovulation we can go back out into the world mm. and make those changes that you know light us up and bring more goodness into our lives oh my god that's so empowering <laughs> almost to like hear that that is normal because i think we're expected to to be go 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 or like why am i a terrible person if i'm suddenly taking everything so like personally yeah. you know it's like why am i suddenly like this oh it's it, it's just pms and like is that normal why am i like and then you get your period and it's like ah it all makes sense <laughs> you know you're like oh enlightening I, it was just because of that but that's so interesting like in the way that it's almost like universal. You're here to introspect yes. this week. You're here to like hone in on your feelings and understand why you mm -hmm. have these feelings and then learn from it. And then it kind of like goes on from week to week. Yeah. Wow. And then ovulation is kind of when we have the, if hormones are balanced, yeah. is when we have the most energy, our skin is glowing. People say that's the best time to get a facial because we're probably releasing extra oils from our glands. And it's also the time, you know, if you're thinking about like, first dates or asking for a promotion, having important conversations, planning yeah. big events. It's when you're going to benefit from your own natural extra boost of energy. Yeah. Oh my God. That makes so much sense because we do skincare all the time, right? And sometimes I feel like no matter what I put on, it's still dull. It's always dry. Nothing seems to help. Mm. And then there'll be a week where I'm like, I feel like Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's like, probably ovulation. Yeah, oh my goodness. Well, and I think it's really important from a skincare perspective, when we're going into the luteal phase before our period and when we're on our period, it's not just when our bodies are most sensitive. I mean, because we're like shedding our entire uterine lining. It's a big process for the body. <laughs> like we've got to give our body some space, but it's also the time that's hardest on our skin. It's the time when we have the lowest amount of estrogen, progesterone, all these different hormones. And so our skin naturally naturally might become like more dry. You might notice less elasticity because of that huge dip mm. in estrogen. And that's natural, right? Our hormones are naturally fluctuating throughout the month, but if you expect it, then you know, okay, on my period, maybe I'm gonna hold off on the acids. I'm gonna hold off on the microderm and the scrubs because I'm just gonna give my skin some extra nourishment and moisture. And then you can come out of it with even more glowing skin. It's like almost another dimension of knowing yourself and knowing your routine. I think of it as like biohacking for women Ooh. because like traditional biohacking is mostly designed for men. It's based on a 24 hour cycle. Mm. Whereas like our bodies operate on a like, 
28-day cycle. And That's it's like, so true. why aren't we having more conversations about how we can biohack our cycle and align our skincare, our movement? I mean, the way we exercise should be totally different. Yeah. You know, like do more of that yin yoga, gentle, slow flow to help with blood circulation. And then in ovulation, go back to your HIIT workout, your cycling class, that like intense era of like aerobics and yes. cardio classes. So one thing we love talking about mm -hmm. on the channel is what to do and what not to do with yes. skincare, right? So when it comes to our period and like PMS symptoms, what are we doing that's aggravating and making our symptoms worse? And what can we do that's going to like alleviate the pains? This is what my mom told me as a kid and my grandma that I ignored until my 30s. So I wish I listened to my Asian family earlier, but the number one thing is actually to avoid ice. Okay. To avoid ice drinks, ice cream, cold foods, because a lot of menstrual issues are caused by cold in the uterus. And so you really want to nourish your body with like warm teas yes. and also like warming herbs. And that's why Elix herbal formulas are actually meant to be taken in the luteal phase, the week prior to your period. So before all of that blood loss starts, we are nourishing blood, we're helping to move blood, we're helping to build chi, and then depending on that individual's pattern of disharmony, we might have herbs in there that are helping to like clear that heat mm -hmm. or clear that damp or support with additional symptoms like hormonal acne or bloating, migraines, cramps, or indigestion. Yeah, because growing up I always heard like have ginger tea and yes. have it hot. Or when you wake up, have room temperature water. Mm -hmm. Never ice cold because it's like a shock to the system. Yes. And then when I was young, I was like, whatever, mom. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna have ice cream when I want it. Yeah. But then like, as you said, growing up, you're like, oh my God, it is true. Yeah, I was like, there's no science behind it. And then when I wiped out ice drinks, I was like, oh, my skin is clearer. Like I don't get, I mean, th and this is not even related to periods. This is just like every day. I don't mm. get as much bloating. I don't get as much cramping, as much acid reflux, like all of that stuff. And like as much um, like loose stools. Mm. Like you notice a lot of people who have alternating diarrhea and constipation, it has to do with like the iced foods. Mm. So guys, try that like one step closer to being intuitive with your body week before no cold foods or like minimize minimize right? yes definitely and your point about ginger is great because ginger is actually one of the herbs we use in every elix formula it's such a beautiful anti-inflammatory and it's a naturally warming spice mm. so it helps to move that blood and chi and in clinical research ginger is at a medicinal dose has actually been shown as effective as ibuprofen for pain. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then you also have the ginger aid yes. and it's delicious. So good. Guys, it's like if you boiled down and made ginger into more of like a delicious syrup mm -hmm. and you can add that into everything, right? Everything. And in these colder months, ginger, our concentrated organic ginger, ginger aid is perfect for your pumpkin spice lattes, your chai lattes. It just warms the body from the inside out and it helps with indigestion. It helps clear internal cold and it's great for our immune health as well. Mm. So what's another thing that you see people do that really aggravates their period that we should. It really comes down to the inflammatory foods. And I know we'll chat all about food on the next episode, but besides diet, it's really how are we caring for ourselves and how are we managing both our response to stress and are we getting enough sleep and the right type of movement. Mm. And so going back to stress, there is a major connection between stress and our menstrual cycles and hormone health. So when we are stressed, and when we're in a state of chronic stress, our body overproduces cortisol, the stress hormone. And like we talked about earlier, the normal functioning of our menstrual cycle has all of these additional hormones like yeah. estrogen, progesterone. And so when our bodies are too busy producing cortisol because we're stressed and we're in that fight or flight mode, it actually steals 
from the healthy production of other hormones that we need. So one of our medical advisors at Alex calls it the cortisol steal. If we're under periods of chronic stress, the cortisol steal will deplete us from other hormones and other normal bodily functions that we need in order to feel like our normal, energetic, happy selves. And so that's when we might feel those intense like mood swings and like anger and frustration. It's like anything someone says could like just set you off. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have the patience we yeah. normally do. Yeah. And that cortisol steal and that stress could lead to even worse, like hormonal cystic mm. acne, could dry out our skin even more. And the indigestion, like stress and digestive health. It's kind of like why, you know, when you're stressed out, you start feel your stomach is churning. Yes. <laughs> or I just don't feel like eating. You're just like so in your head that I'm like, oh, or you go the other mm -hmm. way and you like stress eat. Right. <laughs> and both of which probably take the hormonal imbalance like way off scale even mm -hmm. more, right? Yeah, when we're stressed and we're eating, it actually steals from our body's normal digestive function. So we don't digest the food as well. And that could lead to bloating. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything's related. Yeah, don't eat when you're stressed, guys. This is like my pro tip. If you're stressed or you're angry or frustrated, just take a moment. Mm -hmm. Few deep breaths in the belly, allow your central nervous system to calm down and then eat. <laughs> What's your go-to tip for like de-stress? Breathing, mm. breath work. I mean, it sounds so simple, but our, our brain and our hearts are actually deeply connected. And they've done a lot of scientific studies that the brain and the heart are constantly sending signals back and forth to alert our nervous system that we are safe and mm. we are okay. And I should say, stress is not the enemy. A little right. bit of stress is actually good for us because right. that, there's a fine line between stress and excitement. So a little bit of stress helps get us like going, going. energized, yeah. right? Like we can go about, but it's that chronic stress. It's like when we're always just wound up so tight. Yeah. And so, you know, I think if you can create micro moments of calm for yourself many times throughout the day, like schedule that in, schedule five minutes of breathing like every couple of hours, you actually start to rewire your entire central nervous system and you help your body know that it's safe more often mm. so that it can let go of some of that stress and tension mm. and movement. And, and then we're not talking about like hit and these like high intensity workouts that could actually cause more stress yeah. <laughs> and tension. I think about that and I'm like, oh gosh. I mean, but even like walking around in the park, soaking in the sun, yoga, all of these like stretching it's so good and so healthy on the body and actually on Alexa's instagram we have some short ig live videos on breath work on yoga for blood circulation some of these other resources yes your ig is actually hilarious like the skits but the informative like go-to's and quick like how to use the yeah. the formulas so good guys check out their instagram something that you mentioned before was about exercise yes. okay so let's say we're really active Yes. Or let's say we live a really slow, kind of almost sloth life, or maybe it's just office life, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah, so, so many of us suffer from office life. <laughs> <laughs> or even just like working from home, we can get so comfortable with just like doing nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and that can easily kind of set off uh, a mindset as well. It's like sluggish. For the, the week like leading up or even during it, are there different exercise modes that we should be in throughout the month? So the theme is gentle in the luteal and period phase and then we ramp up in the ovulation phase. So that applies to workouts as well. You know, as we are in the luteal phase leading up to period and honor period, that's a great time for movement that's more like stretching and like slow movement. Like I think like yin yoga, Pilates, like going for walks, like being out in nature is actually so restorative and healing for ourselves. But then like after our periods, as we go into ovulation, we can really benefit from that extra jolt of energy and do more cardio, weight training, mm. HIIT workouts. That's so interesting because when I was younger, I really loved running mm. and like high intensity running. I'm like mm -hmm. kind of hardcore. And then I'd be like, oh my God, am I not doing well? Mm. Am I not training enough this mm. week? Is that why I'm so tired and I don't feel like it? But actually that was the body kind of telling you, oh, slow down. Yeah. It's time to like go into a different pace of life right? sure and then it's like oh and then you bounce back yeah and you're back to normal so i think everyone has their own 
like bodily signs that Definitely. you just kind of have to start reading, right? And everyone has a different baseline. Like, look, if you're like an Olympic athlete, then maybe you don't need to stop running in your yeah. luteal phase. Maybe you just go from like running 50 miles a week to like, <laughs> I don't know, like 20 miles that week. Yeah. So depending on what your baseline is, there's no one size fits all rule. You'll know what's best for you and what does tuning in and giving your body more rest and nourishment means for you. Mm. I wanna ask you, what is the deal with caffeine? Because I am a huge coffee drinker. Yeah. And I think when my period and cycle was at its worst was when I was having three coffees a day. And my period would just never come. And one of the things I realized was when I dropped that down, out of necessity, because I was spending <laughs> too much money, to one coffee a day, it actually helped with the regulation of my cycle. Mm. But at the time, I didn't know if that was the only thing. I mean, there's a lot of research about the impact of caffeine on hormone health. And look, every body is different. It's like some people could drink a whole bottle of wine and not feel buzzed yeah. versus others like my mom. It's like one sip of wine and <laughs> yeah, she's done for the night. And so caffeine can have a different impact on the body. But overall, like the most important thing is when are we having caffeine and for what reason? And are we relying on caffeine almost like a crutch or a band-aid for the energy that our body just doesn't have to give? Mm. Because then that's how we push ourselves beyond our limits and actually deplete ourselves. The most important thing I think, especially for women is in the mornings, like making sure we have something in our stomach before we reach for that first cup of coffee. And that's going to help with like blood sugar management or like body's response to stress and cortisol and just hormone balance in general. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, when we feel that urge to reach for that second or third cup, do we actually need it? Is it because we're feeling sluggish after a meal? Can we go for a walk? Can we get some movement? Can we just like turn on some music and dance for a little yeah. bit? You know, like, is there something else we can do to give our body what it needs more naturally? But there have been a lot of studies done that links the effect of caffeine and alcohol to worsening PMS symptoms. Mm. So I encourage everyone just to experiment. Experiment with cutting these things out or experiment with reducing the dose and see how it makes you feel. So I saw on some videos you were putting the Elix into like your drinks. Yeah. So is that something you can do with your matcha yes. and coffees? Is the coffee like not a good thing to mix? Ah, <laughs> you know, TCM says everything in moderation and everything in balance. So, you know, I think if you, and look, there's studies that also show coffee and coffee beans are really high in antioxidants and good for you. Mm -hmm. So I say, if you're gonna have a cup of coffee in the morning, allow yourself to enjoy it. Have it with some complex carbs, fiber, protein, like a healthy breakfast so that your body can properly absorb the caffeine. And you know, matcha's also not great for everyone either. Mm -hmm. Like we'll talk about this in the next episode, but every food has a warming or cooling energetic and matcha's actually cooling. So it's actually great to put your elix herbs, your cycle balance, or ginger it into matcha mm. because that helps balance out the energetics of matcha. And I really love having my herbs first thing in the morning because I feel like it's such a beautiful way to start the day. Oh my gosh, you have to tell <laughs> me more all about this. So this was already so much information. I think for a lot of us who don't know where to start or don't even know why we were experiencing pains. So thank you so much for sharing all of those details with us. More to come because in the second episode, we're going to get Lulu to share just how we can and eat for our body and how to have the best experience going into our period without all these PMS symptoms that can be totally debilitating and painful. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But can you share with everyone where we can find more about Elix Healing and resources? Yes, you can visit us at elixhealing.com and elix is actually the word for elixir and helix. This idea of an ancient healing remedy meets modern science personalized for you. We have that free online health assessment that Felicia was talking about that you can learn more about your cycle and your symptoms. And we're also on Instagram and TikTok as Elix Healing. And I'm also on TikTok as Lulu the Herbalist. She's so good. Like your bite size kind of like, myth busting on why we have certain things or like why certain things. Anyways, guys, check it out. Description, it will have all the details. And I wanna ask you about my specific cycle balance too. Yeah. So if you wanna know, second episode. Bye. <laughs>